Hello, this is Adam Davis, and this is episode four of Learning Groovy, and today we're going to learn about how everything is an object in Groovy, um, the easy properties, D-string, and a little bit about closures. Okay, so first of all, everything is an object in Groovy, so that means even if you have, say, an integer, let's make a number, um, you can still use it like an object. So I can say num dot get class. All right, and let's run that, and we get the class is an integer object, which in Java, of course, the are integers are there's a primitive type of int and usually you have to wrap an integer in Java in order to get the object so it works a little bit differently in Groovy for example um, you can also if you say 1.3 so if you make a fraction in Groovy that's actually a big decimal so whereas in Java it's really uh, difficult to use big decimals um, you have to call you know create an object and call its methods in Groovy you can treat it just like you would any other number and it still does big decimal arithmetic for you so the other thing about Groovy is that if you use the equals method in Groovy it actually calls the dot equals um, method on that class. So where this would come into play is if you had an actual object. So let's make a class called uh, say vampire. True. All right. So let's make a new vampire and see if it equals another vampire object. Now if this were in Java, these two objects would not be equal because they're two separate instances. Whereas in Groovy, it actually calls the dot equals method here. Of course the return keyword is optional, so we can remove that and still work. In Groovy, it automatically adds getters and setters for all the fields that you have in an object by default. So if I make a class, let's call it shuttle, and it has a name, for example, so that I can create a new shuttle, and I can access it using the dot notation. Another thing it does is it add automatically adds a constructor by default where you can specify the parameters using the map notation, the groovy map notation. So let's call it the space shuttle, for example. And now the name is space shuttle. Well, let's give it a better name. Guys, Challenger. So you can access fields using the dot notation. You can also set, I mean, properties using the dot notation. And what's happening under the hood is it's actually calling the, uh, let's print out the name. It's actually calling the get and set methods when I do this. So if I actually define a set name method, for example, let's see if I can print something out. Setting. And so just to demonstrate what that would do. So here it says setting foo. So actually what it does is since I overrode the set method, it doesn't it doesn't work quite properly anymore and it prints out null. But it says setting challenger when I set the uh, name. So you notice that actually when you call the constructor this way, it's actually calling the bean set method here. So here it's calling set name after creating the instance of shuttle. So what happens if you don't want to have a setter? 
for example, then you just define it as a final string name. And now it's going to throw an exception saying it's a read-only property. It cannot set read-only property name for class shuttle. So if I take that away, then it will compile. Or wait, I'm still setting it because I have this. If I take that away, then it will compile. And of course, the name is null. Um, so what you can do then is like define your own uh, constructor. So let's do that. I'm going to set the name Challenger. Now you notice I'm using single quotes here for the strings uh, that you can do in Groovy. But you can also, if you use double quotes, you can use something called the Groovy string. And in case of Groovy string, you can insert, if I do a dollar sign S, then I'm actually, this is executing Groovy code, and so that's actually printing out the two string method of the shuttle object in that case. Now if I wanted to call a method then use the bracket notation or the curly braces notation to actually call s dot get name. And you can actually do an arbitrary amount of Java of I mean groovy code inside of your G string. So now I'm printing out the name plus the word shuttle, so it says Challenger Shuttle. So lastly, I want to talk about closures. So for this part, I'm going to open an existing file that I've created called Closures, which demonstrates the use of closures. A closure in Groovy is much like uh, an anonymous class in Java, or if you're familiar with Java, uh, much like a Lambda expression. In fact, in Java 8, it can be coerced uh, to be used anywhere a Lambda expression might be used. So in this case, here I've created a closure that takes one parameter called x and returns x plus 1. And then I'm printing out closure and I'm calling the closure with one argument to the number two. And if you're familiar with um, JavaScript, um, it's somewhat similar to how functions work in JavaScript. The other thing you can do in Groovy is if you only have one argument to your closure, you can just use the word it to refer to that argument. So let's go ahead and do that instead. So I'm going to move this print statement down, run it, and it's printing out three. Or what I can do is say, for example, three equals three, and it's printing out true. And the next thing here is I have a list with two elements, foo and bar, and I'm demonstrating the use of a closure to transform this list and collect it into a new list. And in Groovy, one of the uh, Groovy idioms that you'll see is if the closure is the last parameter, it can actually go outside of the parentheses to a call of a method. So in this case, the first parameter is a new list, and the second parameter is this closure which returns it dot to uppercase. So all that's doing here is it's converting all the strings to uppercase. And lastly, you can also pass uh, closures in as parameters to other methods. So here I've got a find method and it's looping what it loops through all the items in a list calls if tester on item, then return that item. So in that case, it's finding the first item that returns true for this tester closure. And here I have 
find out of this array of our list of values, find the first value that's greater than one, and of course it returns the number two. And that's it for today. See you next time.